Good morning. Welcome back to another day of Thankful Thursday. That's right, you guys. Today is Thursday, September the 28th, 2023. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time and you just so happen to come across Leveling Up with Tammy in all areas of our lives, I invite you, my family, my sister, my brothers, my friend, to go ahead, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications so that every single time we do a thankful Thursday devotional, a vlog, a haul, or whatever the case may be, you will be one of the first ones notified that we have a new devotional for the week or the day. That's right, you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. Again, a huge thank you to all of my new subscribers. Thank you so much for deciding to come and be a part of the Leveling Up with Tammy in all areas of our lives family. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, today is Thursday. It's devotional time, and we do have a word from the Lord on today. We're going to dive into our devotional. Um, before we get started, just a little few aesthetic things. You guys, I work from home. I am multitasking this morning. I have me a nice cup of coffee in my Hello Autumn cup here. All right, nice cup of coffee. I have my notes here. I have my word. I will be coming from my ESV study Bible on this morning if anyone wants to know. And yeah, we're ready. Got a little bit of soft jazz playing in the background. Ted is back there somewhere. If you hear any extra noise, please excuse it because we're going to go ahead on and get into this devotional on this morning. Again, I say to you, welcome to the channel. All right, you guys, we're going to go ahead on and open up with the word of prayer. And let's get this devotional going on this morning. All right. Most gracious and everlasting Father God, we come before you on this morning. Lord, we just want to take the time to tell you thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for another day. Thank you, Abba, for another thankful Thursday. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and to be glad in it on today. Father God, I pray that my flesh will decrease and that your Holy Spirit will be alive and awakened in my life. Holy Spirit, speak on this morning. Whatever it is that I need to say to the people, I thank you for helping me to give it to my family with clarity, with understanding. We bind up the spirit of confusion. We bind up every demonic attack of the enemy that will try to come against your word on this morning. Lord, I pray for my sisters and brothers in Christ, whatever they stand in the need of on today, I pray that you will meet them in their time of need. And Lord, we just thank you for all things. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. I pray that you will forgive us of all of our sins, sin of omission, and sin of commission. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes, ma'am. It's thankful Thursday. It's thankful Thursday. Hey, hey, hey. It's thankful Thursday. Yeah. It's time to dive in, y'all. How y'all been, y'all? Excuse my little pillow I got in behind my back here. But I hope you guys have been doing well, feeling well. I pray that you all made it through your summer. Like I said, you guys, I did do a Timu haul. But for whatever reason, the volume is all. You can't hear anything. You can only see the stuff that I got. So I am really waiting to um i'm gonna do another try on haul where i can just try on all of the pieces i'm hoping to do that video this coming up weekend so you guys just be on the lookout for that i know for my family that likes the hauls and what have you they are coming believe me they are coming also my um vlog for when i went on vacation is coming you guys so thank you again for your patience and we're going to go ahead on and dive into this devotional if you see me looking away it's because i'm multitasking this morning for everyone that would like to know all right get a little sip of my coffee all right and we're ready to go all right you guys so this morning, 
we are going to be talking about the Holy Spirit, okay? I have done a devotional on the Holy Spirit before, but the Holy Spirit felt the need for me to uh, talk about it again. So that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. And it's a two part question. Okay. But it kind of means the same thing. It says, how well do you know the Holy Spirit? And what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit in your life? Okay. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? And how well, my family, do you know the Holy Spirit? Yes, please get your notebooks, pen, paper, get your Bible, because we are doing this together. This is our devotional time together, okay? As I always say, please go back, reread the scriptures, study the scriptures, pray, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give your Ruach understanding to what his word has to say to you, okay? Again, what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit and how well do you know him as a believer, okay? Our first scripture this morning, we will be coming from John, the 14th chapter, and it's just one verse here, verse number 26, and it reads, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. This is what Jesus was telling his disciples as he was preparing for his crucifixion, as he was preparing to transition and to go and be with the Father. They was asking all types of questions. Well, when you leave us, Jesus, how are we going to make it? What are we going to do? And he said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, meaning in Jesus Christ's name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So everything that Jesus taught his disciples and his followers while they was here on earth, he told them, don't worry about it, y'all. I got you. I got you, family. Because my God, my Father, he's going to send a helper, which is the Holy Spirit. How well do you, family, know the Holy Spirit? And what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit in your life? Okay, so that was our first um, scripture. And as we are doing this devotional, I'm going to give out several scriptures, but we'll talk about it as we go, okay? All right, so I'm just going to my notes here. So it says, in the beginning, before the earth had been formed, not only was Elohim God, mean the God of the universe, that's Elohim, was present, but someone in the Hebrew called Ruach Elohim. Remember you guys, the devotionals back when I used to say um, Yeshua Hamashiach Elohim, that is Jesus the Christ in Hebrew. So Ruach Elohim, which is the spirit of God, was present in the beginning, okay? The Spirit of God was present at the very creation of the world and that the Spirit of God is distinct from God the Father. So the Spirit of God and God the Father, are the, are, they have two different distinct roles, okay? And the Holy Spirit is the power which activates the will of God and the Word of God throughout His creation. So the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to activate the will of God and to fulfill the purposes of God in our life as our creator, as our heavenly father, okay? How well, sis, do you know the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit alive, awakened, and activated in your life on this morning? If he's not, my friends, I'm going to tell you how the Holy Spirit can be activated in your life, okay? All right, we're going to move right along. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit activates the will of God in the hearts and mind of every true believer. Y'all remember, everybody that claims to be a Christian is not considered a true follower of Christ, <clears throat> There is a huge difference, okay? There is a difference. 
All right, y'all give me one second here. Remember, I told y'all I'm multitasking this morning. <clears throat> All right, there is a difference between a true, true believer and a Christian, okay? All right, so we, the, the Holy Spirit will activate the will of God in every true believer, heart and mind, okay? The Holy Spirit works as a direct access point between the believer and God. So the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, he, he, he gives us direct access to the Father, okay? Without the Holy Spirit, without being a believer, if you're just a Christian, then you don't, the access point to God is not as sharp as it will be or as direct as it could be if you were a true follower, a studier, a, a, you seek the things of the kingdom daily. The Holy Spirit is awakened. The Holy Spirit is alive in your life. Okay. That's when you have direct access to the father. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right, the Holy Spirit will reveal will reveal to us the nature of God and the and his will on earth. That is why it is so important family that we that the holy that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. It is not enough to just come into salvation and there is no repentance. You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that's the beginning of salvation the next level again and y'all these are some of the things that we have talked about talk about so many times but i really feel like because we're in end times the holy spirit wants me to continue to talk about these things because it's about my family being delivered it's about us as sisters and brothers in christ really being delivered and set free so that the spirit of god can can be activated and activate the will of God on our behalf, okay? All right, moving right along, all right? So the Holy Spirit comes as a comforter. Remember in John 14 and 26, he says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, meaning in Jesus Christ's name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said. Again, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He is a helper, okay? The Holy Spirit will be sent to all believers to bring strength, to strengthen them, and to, re and to reveal to them the truth about Jesus Christ, his nature, and his mission here on earth. When Jesus the Christ was here on earth, he was on a mission, okay? He was on an assignment, okay? His assignment was done, it was fulfilled, and then he had to go back to be with the Father. And that's when the Holy Spirit came on the scene, all right? The Holy Spirit is also a keeper of every true believer that wants to be kept. The Holy Spirit my sister and my brother will not keep you if you don't have a desire, a burning desire in your heart to be kept. Remember, we have free will. God gives us free will. You're either going to live right or you're not. You cannot continue to straddle the narrow path. You can't serve two gods, okay? We can't live in sin and say that we we are a believer too, okay? The Holy Spirit will never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, dwell on the inside of an unclean, dirty temple negative. That's not happening, okay? All right? How well, my sister and brother, do you know the Holy Spirit? Do you know without a shout of a doubt in your mind that the Holy Spirit is awakened, is activated, and connected to your heart? Are y'all in covenant? You, my friend, and the Holy Spirit, okay? Or do you, are you just a Christian in name, by religion, by, or like the, the uh, Pharisees? 
and the Sadducees. We cannot be religious people. This faith walk has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with religion at all. Jesus the Christ was not a religious man, okay? He is not a religious deity. He is life. He is the word of God, okay? He is the living word. That is who he is, okay? And so for a lot of us that say that we are connected, that we love him, but I'm a Christian, but I'm going to still serve the devil too. No, ma'am. He said, if you are not a, a friend of the devil is an enemy to God. That's what the words say. So we have to think about it. How well do I know the Holy Spirit? And Lord, Holy Spirit, teach me to understand your purposes. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Okay. All right. Again, the Holy Spirit is a keeper of every believer that wants to be kept. Okay. He keeps us from stumbling to strike our foot against something unstable. The Holy Spirit job is to keep you, my sister and brother, from stumbling, from going back to the sin, from recycling sin over and over and over and over again. But we say, we profess out of our mouth that we are a true follower, but our actions are saying something against the word of God. So the Holy Spirit job, my friends, is to keep you from stumbling okay to keep you from falling okay jude 1 verses 24 through 25 and it reads all right now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and with and with great joy his glory okay and with great joy verse 25 to the only God, our Savior, through, through Jesus Christ, okay? Our Lord, to be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all times, now and forever, amen, okay? Plain as day. Again, that's Jude. Y'all, excuse the noise outside. Somebody's cutting their grass. Hold on, y'all. Let me close this window. Because I want y'all to be able to hear clearly what the word is saying on this morning. So we're going to go ahead on and block that little distraction out there. Again, Jude 1, 24 through 25. And it reads, Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling, the Holy Spirit, remember he's a keeper, and to make you stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, now and forever. The Holy Spirit is a keeper. That is the purpose of the Holy Spirit over your life, family. He, he's a comforter, he strengthens us, and he keeps us if you want to be kept okay free will the holy spirit is not going to go against your will the holy spirit will activate the will of god the creator over our life but the holy spirit and god they ain't gonna go against your will because he gives us free will so if he was going to pressure us or to make us live right then he would have never offered us free free will a choice you either gonna live right or you're gonna live wrong free will let's level up family let's repent it's time if you feel family as we're going through and learning more about the holy spirit and the purposes of the holy spirit if you feel that in your life as a christian that you don't feel that the holy spirit is really working on your behalf now is the time, my sister and brother, for you to repent all over again. Allow sanctification and purification process to settle in your heart. That means to deliver you from your past, to deliver you from sin, so that the Holy Spirit can begin to dwell on the inside of your temple. Remember, we are the temple. We are the house 
that the Holy Spirit will reside in our earthly bodies. But the Holy Spirit will never, ever, ever, ever dwell in a unclean temple. Meaning, if you are living a double life as a Christian, if you are not walking the narrow path, you got one foot over here and one foot over there, the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in you. No, ma'am. He said, what does righteousness have in common with lawlessness? Absolutely nothing. So y'all keep that in mind, okay? We're going to move right along. Okay. The Holy Spirit brings about conviction of sin in a true believer's life. When the Holy Spirit sis, is awakened in your life, you're going to feel some type of conviction of the sins that you were involved in, okay? Holy Spirit will never condone sin of any kind in our life. Whatever the sin is, family, that is connected to your heart, the entanglements of your heart, whether whatever the sin is, if you find yourself, you have come into salvation, you're praying and asking the Lord to sanctify you, to purify you so that the Holy Spirit can dwell on the inside, but you yet, there were some things that you were involved in before you surrendered your heart to Christ. Marriages, un, unnatural marriages, and you know that it's not right. I pray that the Holy Spirit will convict our hearts and give us the strength. Remember, the comforter, he's strengthening you, family, to come out from amongst that unnatural, ungodly covenant of any kind, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a sorority, whether it's a fraternity, whether it's Freemasonry, whatever that covenant is, that unrighteous, unclean covenant that you family went into, that you find your heart entangled in, intertwined into the fabric of your heart, I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring about a spirit of conviction that will make us repent, that will make us bow down and worship and say, Lord, I'm sorry, Father. I want to be delivered from this thing because guess what? I'm sorry, but you will not inherit the kingdom of God with all of these unclean, unholy covenants that we are involved in. You can't just walk away. You can't, you can't, we as a real believer, we as real children of the most high Abba Yah, of the most high God, Abba, Abba Father, okay? So when I say Abba God, y'all, don't get it confused. Don't allow the enemy to play on our minds and say, well, what is she saying? I'm talking about the creator of the universe, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He is Abba Father, okay? He is the, 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 the father of all fathers. But anyway, as I was saying, we cannot be, have the, be intertwined in all these things that we did when we were in the world and think that you can live a holy life and think that, well, when my earthly experience is over, I'm going to still make it into the kingdom, even though I was involved in a unnatural marriage, same sex marriage. Uh, I was a frat brother. I was a soror. I was a Freemason. No, ma'am. Absolutely not. You have to denounce renounce, divorce, repent, period. You got to repent and then you got to denounce and you got to renounce and you got to divorce. Lord, break this unnatural, ungodly covenant that I found myself tangled up in when I was in sin. But hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, glory, hallelujah for deliverance. Because y'all, without deliverance from sin, the Holy Spirit is not going to be activated in your life. As long as we as believers have sins of all kinds continue to be connected to us on a daily basis, 
Absolutely not. You can't say, oh, well, I've been inactive. Or, oh, I'm not with him or her anymore. I'm not with my wife anymore, woman. I'm not with my husband anymore, man. No, you better get a divorce and come out from amongst them because we will not inherit the kingdom. And it ain't what I say, y'all. This is all biblical. Okay, my purpose here today through the Holy Spirit is to help us at, think about it. Ask yourself the question, okay? How well do I know the Holy Spirit? If we as sisters and brothers in Christ say that we know the Holy Spirit and we know that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in our life, then there's absolutely no way you're going to stay in these un, unholy covenants of any kind relationships, uh, sisterhood, brotherhood, whatever hood you want to call it. No, ma'am. Come out from amongst the masses. We have to stop being deceived. Please, the Holy Spirit will deliver us from a spirit of deception if you want to be delivered, my sister and brother, okay? All right? Um, remember Jude 1 and 24, it says, Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and with great joy. Basically, that scripture is saying, whatever the issues of your heart is on today, family, whatever entanglements, whatever sins, even though you've asked, you've repented, you came into salvation, you're, you're in the process of sanctification and purification of your heart. It, remember the Holy Spirit, he will keep you from stumbling, meaning he will keep you from going back to that unnatural relationship. He will keep you from going back to that unlawful sisterhood that was done in the name. They profess Christ. But their lifestyle says something totally different. Y'all, we got to come out. That is my prayer for my family. Lord, please deliver my sisters and brothers in Christ from these unclean covenants. Because, sis, we, bro, we ain't, you're not going to make it. And I'm going to stop saying we because I have no desire to ever be connected to any type of unlawful things such as that. Okay? So, y'all, we got to do better. We got to do better. We got to do better, all right? We got to level up. Hey, we got to level up, period. We got to level up. Y'all, it's time to grow up. It's time to be real women and men for God. We got to get on the battlefield and be for real. Stop playing. We can't keep playing with the Lord. Family, please. How well do you know the Holy Spirit? I'm, all, I'm giving us the Holy Spirit through me, the vessel, is telling us this morning what the purpose, what his purpose is, why he was sent to the earth, why he was sent to dwell in our temples. But if you, come on now, level up. All right, let's keep on moving. So the Holy Spirit brings about conviction of sin in a true believer's life. Holy Spirit will never, ever, ever condone sin in our lives of any kind. Through the convictions of the Holy Spirit, sanctification, purification of the heart of man takes place. This is the process of deliverance, y'all. Deliverance of a believer's heart. If a true follower of Christ don't allow the Holy Spirit to be activated in their lives daily, then there will be no deliverance for you, period. No deliverance equals no kingdom for you for us period moving right along the convictions that the holy spirit brings is necessary in order to get to another level in christ okay you gotta be delivered you can't just say okay i believe i'm saved without deliverance no there has to be a change deliverance means change Deliverance means to come out from, to let go of your past, to deny your flesh means to be delivered, okay? If we're not doing that, then keep, I'm going to keep praying in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit. I need, really need you to crack the heart, that hardened heart that my family have 
so that they won't miss out on the kingdom because okay all right the holy spirit is also wisdom the first and the highest gift of the holy spirit because of it because it is perfect because of its perfection of faith okay it's the it's so important that we walk and operate in the spirit of, in the wisdom of god remember the beginning of knowledge it the, the fear what the lord hold, hold, let me let me get that right knowledge is the beginning of um the fear of god is the, the beginning of knowledge and wisdom the devil trying to make me mess that scripture up but no you got to fear if you don't fear god then there's no wisdom and no knowledge for you okay we got to get it together okay through the wisdom of god the holy spirit bring the the holy spirit begins activated in our lives and can become better so that we can become a better witness we need wisdom the wisdom of god that the Holy Spirit brings through him residing in our temples, y'all, is necessary, okay? We can't operate outside of wisdom. Wisdom is going to tell you, sis, daughter, don't do it. Daughter, fix your attitude. Daughter or son, that is not the best decision for you right now. We need to make sure that we are praying. Holy Spirit, I need more wisdom. Show me the wisdom of God. Help me to accept the wisdom of God over my life. Okay? That's what we have to make sure. <clears throat> that we are out here praying to be kept through the wisdom of God. Okay? Okay? All right, and we're almost done here, y'all. Isaiah, the 11th chapter, verse 2. The Spirit of God will rest on him a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Isaiah, the second chapter, please go back and read it. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Without the fear of the Lord, you ain't getting none of these. You ain't, it ain't going to happen, okay? The Holy Spirit unites the believers with Christ and play with christ and places him in the body of christ the church also he he unites the believer with christ in his death enabling him to live victoria victoriously over sin the holy spirit controls the believer who yields to god and submits himself to god's word that's just that's who he is that's who the Holy Spirit is, okay? That's how the Holy Spirit operates in our life if we allow the Holy Spirit to take the lead, okay? Because remember, the Holy Spirit taking the lead over your life, my family, all he doing is activating the will of God over our lives, okay? The Holy Spirit is being obedient to the command of God, our creator, okay? All right, and... Another scripture we want to look at here is 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18. And it reads, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Okay? 18. We, we all with unveiled faces are looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord and are being transformed into the same image of from glory to glory. This is from the Lord who is the Spirit. Okay? So, the Holy Spirit, His purpose is also is to bring us to, into freedom. Freedom. There's freedom when the Holy Spirit is connected in our life. There's freedom in God. There's no bondage. There, there's no bondage. We're not bound. Even though Christians 
try to make it seem like it's so hard to live right and it's so hard to do this right and it's so hard to do that right or oh, i just can't do it that used to be me when i especially when i was younger early adulthood of life when you just want to live your life you just want to sing and i want to sing in the choir too i'm a sin and i'm a shout call myself shout and praising the lord too yeah that was me in my in my younger years of my walk with with christ call myself walking with him anyway i knew of him but he didn't know me because i, I was living a double life and basically you guys we can't we can't live like that that is not god's purpose over our life and in conclusion my family in conclusion, I would have to say that this, that the Holy Spirit job, his purpose is simply to activate the will and the purposes of God over our life daily. Okay. Over a true believer, over his children. Okay. After Jesus Christ's assignment was done and fulfilled here on the earth, he left us with a comforter, our help for in the time of trouble our hope for tomorrow. That is who the Holy Spirit is. That is the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Um, the, the, and the Holy Spirit, his purpose in our lives, there is no limitations on what the Holy Spirit can do on our behalf. Remember, the Holy Spirit gives us direct access to God. Without the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside, we can't we can we can pray and 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 we got to go through that process of deliverance okay there without deliverance there's there's not as there's not a direct pathway to god like you think or like how we have like how we thought it was y'all okay so that is our thankful thursday for today you guys y'all i am under 40 minutes hallelujah but i'm probably gonna talk about 40 minutes now but anyway you guys please 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 y'all please be encouraged i pray in the name of jesus that this word this week thankful thursday was beneficial for you for all of us y'all we really have to take a step back and think okay, do I really know the Holy Spirit like I thought I do? And now that I know what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is being activated in my life, then that's the time for you to pray, Lord, I really fill me up till I overflow in your anointing with your Holy Spirit resting over my life. Holy Spirit, I need for you to control my life every single day. Holy Spirit, thank you for sanctifying me. Thank you for purifying my heart. Thank you for giving me the strength through the word of God and through the Holy Spirit being activated in my heart that I can walk away from sin. I'm not afraid to renounce. I'm not afraid to denounce. I'm not afraid to divorce from same-sex marriages. It's okay, sis. It's okay, brother. You're going to be okay. See, when we're in sin, we we have all, our eyes are closed. The eyes of our hearts are closed. The eyes of our mind are closed. We can't see in the spiritual realm what the enemy is doing to our lives and how he's messing us up by causing us to be entangled into all of these ungodly, unnatural covenants. Pledging sorority, fraternity of any kind, you guys, is the same level as a marriage. You go into covenant. You do a ritual. You sign your name in the Lamb Book of Death instead of the Lamb's Book of Life. But then they say, but it's built off in Christian biblicals. That's the whole problem. It's built off of Christian biblicals. Most Christians that say they're Christians aren't Christians. They're lukewarm believers. They're carnal Christians. And then you take the word of God and you blast, you basically blaspheme the pages of the Bible by involving it in your rituals, in your oaths. And I'm talking about 
the sororities, the fraternities, the secret societies, the secret sorcery and witchcraft that the word clearly talks about. Y'all remember, Jesus rebuked them demons. He called out the sorceries. He rebuked them. So why would you, Christian woman or man, go and covenant with the devil when Jesus done already told us that it's wrong? But no, I love the Lord. I go to church. I sing in a choir. We have our meetings. We open up with prayer. We do this. We read the scriptures. Sis, no ma'am. The Holy Spirit ain't there. Y'all think the Holy Spirit, some of y'all, you think the Holy Spirit is awakened and activated in your life when you are connected to the dark forces of the enemy? Absolutely not. Remember, the Holy Spirit is not going to dwell in an unclean temple. The fact that you, my sister, took that oath or my brother, you went into covenant when you were in college, when you were younger, when you didn't know any better. But see, I get it. That's what we do when we're not in Christ. We were blind. We didn't know. But now that you know, and now that you call yourself preaching and teaching the word of God in, in his name, and yet you still, you got, you got a nerve to have Greek Sunday? What is that? Greek night? Y'all, come on. Level up. Level up. Level, 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 level up. A hey, level up. Level up. Level, level, level up. Come on, y'all. Stop that foolishness. Well, I'm here to tell you, this sister right here is here to send a warning from the Holy Spirit that, again, choose ye this day. Those of us that participate in such foolishness will not inherit the kingdom. Period. Sis, you are operating in the, my sisters and brothers, because it ain't just the women. You are operating in the spirit of a witch, okay? Pull, go get your ritual book, sweetheart. Go get, the, when you pledged back in college days, compare the verses. He said, one of the Ten Commandments, he says, to have no other God before me. You took an idol sorority is an idol okay you're idolizing dead women dead people they still dead guess what sis they dead though they still in the dirt they ashes they ain't they didn't get up in three days they can't heal you they don't give you no power the only power you getting from the greek nine the sora sisters the dead only thing you're getting from them is uh demonic spirits that's it that's the secret y'all better be delivered the holy spirit is saying come out daughters from the from that come out my sons from the freemasonry is demonic okay why y'all call it a secret though that's Darkness, sis. That's darkness, bro. Why you gotta be in covenant in bed with Satan, Lucifer? Come out and be delivered. Because the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in your lives. Negative. Come out, y'all. We gotta do better. We got to level up. Okay? And I know everybody won't like what I have to say, what the Holy Spirit is using me to say. I just hate to see genuine people you portray to be so on fire for the Lord, some of us. But you got a dark secret connect. You got a dark covenant, sis, connected to you. The same as my sisters and brothers that are married to the same sex. You think you will make it into the kingdom? That... That is an abomination before God. He did not create you, my sisters, to be sleeping with one another. He did not create you, my brothers, to be having sex with one another. That is unclean, unnatural behavior. Come out. 
That is my prayer for us today, family, that whatever the issues of our heart is, whatever sins, whatever secret sins that you find yourself, family, connected to today, the Holy Spirit wants to deliver you. You can have freedom from your dark secrets if you repent and ask the Holy Spirit to sanctify and to purify your heart. Repent, family. And y'all ain't being funny. I'm so serious right now. And I'm whispering because it's a secret. God wants to bring you out of that secret of lies and deceit. Come out from amongst them. Be separated. You pledging in the dark. You pledging. You online and you can't tell nobody about it. You can't even be honest about it. It's wicked. Witchcraft. Come out and find the freedom in God. Again, 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. And we're going to go this time. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Family. There is no freedom in soror soror uh, sororities, fraternities, Freemason, unnatural marriages. There is no freedom. There's only bondage. Okay? We all with unveiled faces pray, family, ask the Holy Spirit to remove the veil. Take the mask off of your face. Excuse me, take the scales off in your eyes so that you can see. Unveiled faces are looking as in a mirror. Y'all need to get a mirror and look at yourself. Look through the lenses of the of, of your eyes and look at look at the how dark you are. Look at the lies and the deceit that you're covering up. You're trying to cover it up and say that you love God, but really you don't. He going to say, I don't even know you. You know me, but I don't know you. I ain't, nobody ain't coming into my kingdom that I don't know. No, ma'am. Unveil the faces are looking, unveiled faces are looking in the mirror at the glory of the Lord and are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. This is from the Lord who is the spirit. God wants us to really be sold out for him. We have to surrender our hearts to Christ, y'all. Okay? I pray and hope that this week's Thankful Thursday, again, has been beneficial. That it has been, someone has become awakened. The veil is being removed off of a lot of our faces so that we can continue to grow in Christ. Okay? I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of today. Again, happy Thankful Thursday to you. Please go and find something to be thankful for because y'all, it's time to level up. We got to get our life together. Time is not on your side. We don't have any more time to continue to play with God. All right, you guys. But again, grace and peace be unto you a hey, it's thank thursday a hey, it's thankful thursday it's thank thursday mm, 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 mm. it's thankful thursday yeah y'all take care i gotta go do some work i'll talk to y'all later bye